And when you're waggler fishing, or any kind of float fishing, it's important to choose your tackle accordingly. Now we're fishing a light float and we're using it in shallow water and that means that we have to choose our, our line choice is, is really important. Very common these days, because of all the carp in, in all these lakes, to use really thick line because you think you need to get, you know, drag these fish in and you're going to get broke and all the rest of it. But we're not fishing like that today. We're fishing single maggot, small hooks, and we're catching, you know, manageable fish. We're not getting dragged around with carp. And even if we were, because we're using a, a waggler rod, which is quite forgiving, um, and it's winter as well, we won't get you know, so the frantic fight that you can imagine you'd get in the summertime. So this three pound line that I'm using um, is perfect because it cuts through the water and therefore doesn't pick up the toe quite as much as what a thicker line would. It's easier to sink because it breaks the surface better. So choose your real lines according to what you're trying to do. Yeah, if I was to use a six pound line, that would mean that I'd have to use a heavier float to basically pull the line off the reel. So I'd have to put a lot more effort in or add this massive float because the line would create drag. And it's not just drag when you're casting, it's drag when you're trying to sink the line and it's also drag with the toe and the wind. So just think about what you're trying to do and stack the odds in your favour to make life a little bit easier for you. So if you come in and you're fishing single maggot with a nice light hook and you start for a day's pleasure fishing, catching, you know, silvers, and you, as I said, you'll get the carp out on this sort of tackle anyway, no problem at all. Just consider that, three pound leap reel line. To go into a little bit more detail about this waggler rig, I just want to show you and talk you through from the top right down to the hook. So the first thing I did, I took this three pound main line and I've threaded on a couple of rubber stoppers. Now these are the ones that are threaded onto a pre-threaded wire. Slide them up onto the line and the reason I use these is because, sorry, the reason I use two is because that gives me a good, strong, stiff and it doesn't move way of locking that shot. It's a pre-loaded float, so it's, as we spoke about before, tungsten ins uh, insert loading in the bottom, which means I don't need too many shots, it keeps it nice and neat. I then slid on another couple of uh, rubber stoppers and that is basically the locking of the float. Now you'll see underneath that I've actually got five number eight shots. Now when I set this rig up, that is basically the shotting for the float and that allows me a little bit of uh, movement and variance and adjustability in the rig because if I need to slide some of those shots further down to make my bait sink faster, I can do. But what I've actually got beneath that two number 10 shots. Now we're using a very very thin insert waggler. You need to use a waggler that you can see but you need to use one that's as sensitive as you possibly get it and because that's such a nice sensitive float that allows me to be able to read number 10 shots that I've got placed there and I've done them equidistant. It's not very deep on this lake um, so that should give me a nice slow fall because we're loose feeding maggots and we want to replicate that when we cast our waggler in as the hook falls like that we're hoping that we're going to try and replicate the loose fed maggots and the hook is going to do the same thing. Now just beneath that shot, because I've pushed that shot down to my knot you'll be able to see that I've actually got a loop to loop method. So I've tied a loop in the main line and if you look at that you'll see that they're quite big loops and I do that on purpose. The reason why I always use big loops on a, a, a waggler or any kind of running line rig is because I believe a long loop lays flatter and it uh, prevents spin-ups and tangles. If you've got the nice beautiful short loops that you can tie in a pole rig uh, with a loop tying mechanism that keeps them open and which is great for using but I don't think they lay flat and that can create spin when you're retrieving your, your line. Some people also like to use a, a big loop because they can actually see it. So if you're a guy that maybe hasn't got the dexterity that he needs or the eyesight, don't be worried about tying a big loop. It's not a problem. It probably enhanced your fishing. So looped onto that main line is a 10 inch hook length. Now I use 10 inch because that's, in my opinion, long enough to stop spin ups. If you use a short hook length, they do spin up a little bit but it's short enough so that the shot, bottom shot, isn't too far away from the hook. That's a diameter 10 hook length and tied to that I've got an 18 B510. 
And that's a lovely balanced waggler rig for fishing through the water or on the drop. It's called many different things. And what we've got is the versatility, as I said, with the shots that are around the bottom of the float that I've pushed up nice and tight up to the stoppers so they don't waggle around when I'm casting and they don't um, interfere with the flight of the float, but they are on the bottom side to aid casting. I can bring them down if I want to alter the speed of which my maggot falls through the water. Dead simple, dead easy and versatile. So let's talk about floats. Now, floats come in many, many different guises. These are wagglers, and a waggler means it's attached at the bottom. And the nature of it is that it will waggle around on the line, and that's why they're called wagglers. So we'll just try and simplify it today and just talk about this particular type of float. We're fishing on a still water, and therefore this is probably the most suitable float because the line is at the bottom, therefore the line sinks underneath the surface. That allows fishing presentation uh, to be a lot easier, and the float does the work for you. Now, to quickly run through the types of floats, because if you're walking into a tackle shop and you see all these different variants, you're probably going to start getting confused. Why are they different? What do they do? So here's a simple um, ABC on them. This one is a bodied waggler, named because it has this large bulbous body on the bottom. That's designed for one reason, one reason only. It carries extra weight. So if you want to cast further, or you need to have more weights down your line and not just around the float, this will give it the buoyancy that it needs to carry uh, that extra weight. Because you can see from above the body, it's no different to the others really. The next float is a straight waggler, named because it literally is that. It's the same diameter at the bottom as it is at the top. Therefore, it's a straight waggler. Thicker top, so you'll see more visible. Now, that's all about the buoyancy of the tip. And buoyancy is something you'll hear me keep repeating and talking about while we're talking about floats, because the buoyancy in the tip serves uh, the purpose that you need um, if you want to fish different ways. So this one will carry more uh, weights, so if you're using shots, that'll carry more shots to sink the float. Also, if you want to use that to drag line on the bottom, because if you want to fish on the bottom and you get some uh, drift from either wind or tow, That'll counteract that. So that's a perfect float for fishing on rivers. Some people like to use them because they can see them. The rule of thumb is that you should always fish with the thinnest float at the tip that you can see. Don't try and fish with a float that you can't see because if you can't see, you'll not be able to fish. You'll not see the bites and you'll not be able to read the float. So it's very important that you choose a tip to suit you. But these are just rules of thumb and use as a guideline. Next there is what is called an insert waggler. And it's called that because it's straight for 90% 90, 90 of its length. And then at the top, it's got a thinner insert. Now, sometimes you get inserts that are thick and sometimes you get them that are really thin. This is probably quite a thin insert for a waggler. But because of the nature of these particular floats, which are plastic, it's a hollow tip and you can still see that. Despite its diameter, you can still see that because the light will pass through it. These are solid. These are all peacock wagglers. This is a crystal waggler from Drennan brilliant floats and then the reason I've got this one on the end is because this is different to all three of those in the fact that at the bottom there's no loading the other three have already got the weight in them so you can see that that's it's got a little piece of uh, tungsten on the bottom of there and that basically allows you to just pick a float up and it will sink if I cast put that into the water now it'll sink to about there which means then you only need a few shots to either lock the float onto the line or you need a few shots to sink your rig so it'll go down. So depending on what you want to do, depends whether you want to use a loaded float, which are, in my opinion, a lot easier, or if you want to use an un unloaded float because you want to put uh, an amount of shot around the float and then more down the line, that will be the choice for you. You can always tell whether a float is loaded or not. So if you're in the tackle shop and you're trying to work it out and you can't see that it's obvious, is a little balance test like that. So I'm just gonna lay that on my fingers and you'll see that the weight, if I just pull that, that's probably gonna fall on the float because the weight is tipping it over. Whereas this float, you'll see, has gone the other way. And that's a perfect, actually I couldn't have done that better because that gives you the, the um, the feeling that that float weighs the same at both ends, whereas this one's heavy at the bottom. So that's got loading in it, and this one doesn't, because it doesn't balance, okay? So you can see that, look, that one won't do the same. That one will always fall off. 
perfect little tip just to help you to choose the right float for your day's fishing.